Well, hello again, everybody. Or, you know, nobody. Depending on who sees this live and who sees this on replay. Hello, I'm Statistical L0. The L stands for Lee. Uh, and I didn't have a show for today. I'll admit it. I can be a big bird and admit it. I didn't have a show. I didn't have anything to talk about. But I wanted to keep up this habit of streaming for when I do have something to talk about. Now... What does an artist do typically when they don't have much to talk about? They start drawing, right? So I thought about what I could talk about in terms of drawing, and it kind of came to me that sometimes when I'm looking at a project on Indiegogo or whatever, I'll be looking at the art, and one of those things that jumps out at me to me as a criticism is the acting, the acting in the art. Sometimes what you'll have is, uh, particularly in uh, women characters, and female characters, um, there's a, a desire for them to be sultry. So they don't have a lot of, a lot of, you know, much of a look on the face. Or with guys where you want them to look tough. So you just kind of have them stone faced, you know, throughout the whole thing. While that could inform their character a little bit for the reader, it doesn't exactly give you much to, to digest, if you know what I mean. Hmm. So when you're looking at it without words, right, you're looking at the page without words, and you, you as an artist, you want to be able to tell a, a good chunk of the story on the page without any words. Um. And the acting helps do that, right? Now, sometimes it's a little more difficult when you're doing it with with uh, more realistic characters. With cartoons, it's a little easier to get like some hard emotion across, depending on you know what you're going for, like extreme shock, surprise, sadness, happiness. You can you can stretch and you can uh, blow these these emotions up to where it's undeniable what it is the character's feeling in the situation, right? So, um, you know, you, you take like uh, a character and his girlfriend just dumped him or something like that. And, and then he's just walking down the stairs of the street, just saggy shoulders, lip down, real sad. You can tell he's sad. Uh, some of the more realistic comics, you know, you might have him just walking out and he's just got like a, a stern look on his face and he's just not happy. And you kind of got to read into that a little bit. But I mean, when you simplify your art, when you simplify your drawing, that makes it clearer more often than not, right? So this is what I do, okay? Let me bring this up. This is what I do uh, in terms of how I, I decide my facial, facial expressions and stuff like that. So I'm just going to quick draw like a character here, right? We'll do, uh, we'll do gen generic man. Just um, give him a big old chin, ear, and neck, right? Just enough just to kind of show his genericness. <laughs> okay. Let me get the line down that. Whoop. We don't want that sun. Okay. So perfect. Give him like a. Geek bone there. His eye is going to come off. Okay. I think we've got our generic man. Right here. Okay, so not a whole lot to go on. And I'm just going to go ahead and make another uh, layer on top of that. So we can we can do some stuff here. So. Let's look at like a base. A basic cartoony. You know. Eyes and stuff. So when you're doing eyes, you know, you might notice like sometimes people do it like that. Right? You want you want a little bit more because it's 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 you know it's on a sphere, but you want not a straight line across the top typically, you know. You want like a, a little bit of a curve. It's almost like a three part deal. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. 
and then you put a little lid in there. Okay. But that's I'm getting off on a tangent, right? So let's just get like a generic looking face here. And when you're doing your, your characters, you know, the nose sometimes for people is, is a little bit of a challenge. I'm not a huge fan of drawing noses myself, but if you imagine um, like a box around the nose, right? You got your eyes, the, the middle of the eye typically comes down to the end of the lip and so forth. Um, that kind of puts like a, a what do you a, a batter's box or a pitcher's box kind of thing for where you want that nose and that'll center it for you because the whole thing is in a box each corner the mouth uh the eyes and the nose is in the center right now um you get sh let's just get some some basic eyes in here we don't even need the irises we'll just We'll just do some eyes here, quick ones. Okay, so there he is. There's generic man. He's uh, he's very generic. He's got really nothing going on in his day. He just woke up. He doesn't have any reason to be angry or sad or happy yet. You know, there's still bacon in the fridge. He's still he's not sad that it's gone. You know, he he's uh, he's backed his favorite crowd funders. He knows they're being worked on. So he just woke up nothing going on okay so the eyebrows right that's this is this is where a lot of the power in your expression comes from right the eyebrows are huge so if you wanted to make him surprised right get those things up there now keep in mind the brow the brow ridge on your skull typically is going to be about you know in this area so you know if you're going realistic you're going to want to stick to there. But if you're doing cartooning, the best thing is, I mean, you can stretch these. Eyebrows could be all the way up there. <laughs> it wouldn't look it wouldn't look right. But you can, you know, you can stretch the eyes to indicate some like real shock or surprise. Or you can bring the eyes eyebrows down here all the way and then scrunch up the eyes. Kind of like suspicious right oh what i like to do and I, I found this trick out a while ago but what i like to do with my eyebrows is build a domino mask right so there's a reason these things work so well in in comic books um because right you don't necessarily need the bottom part but the top part that's where it works see uh it's gonna kind of follow the eye wherever it goes but see basically you're going to hit kind of a mask hi amanda thanks for uh for stopping in day off's going okay i've uh didn't have much of a show so i'm just kind of doing some some <laughs> drawing exercises on on here um hope you're having a great day too all right so i mean so you build you build a mask for your character for your eyebrows right and that should See, you can you can but like I said you don't need the bottom part right so let's just say for example uh, this captain generic here he just got out of bed and he's looked out the window and he's looking at like UFO guys or, or they're abducting people left and right and they're uh, they're bringing them up into their their spaceships and they're like uh, shooting them out the the ceiling and 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 uh, just kind of seeing how far they can shoot people. Now you'd, you'd probably be a little bit surprised, right? So get those eyebrows up nice and high, and maybe get a little little bit of a, a squish with the uh, forehead stuff. Now with his eyes, see, you're gonna want to go a little bit wider with that. You're gonna want to follow. Hey, welcome in, Dr. Mask. You're going to want to follow like a, the eyebrows up. The eyebrows go up and so so do the eyelids, right? So 
Now the mouth. Let's get rid of that and let's just kind of <laughs> right. bring this down a little bit. So nose doesn't need to do too much at this point. Um, maybe teeth, depending on how you want to do them. There's your shock. Cut all that back. Go back to generic man. Cut the eyebrows out. There we go. We plucked them now. Now he sees the aliens and he's He's, he was shocked at what he saw, but then all of a sudden there's this resolute need to do something. So he gets gets the eyebrows down nice and low, right? Maybe get some some kind of squish in there, indicate that that's that skin's bunching up, right? And and his eyelids gonna come come in like this because he's gritting his teeth. All right, take that mouth out of there, and we're gonna give him like a like a frown, like I'm gonna do something now. Now it's my time. All right. So there you go. The eyebrows are down, just like that. It's different expression. But then he goes to open the door to fight the bad guys, and he realizes. Oh, we went back back too far. He realizes that um oh man, he 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 can't he can't go out because he's gonna miss his favorite show. Because he's not that great a superhero. Alright, so we're gonna give these eyebrows like a bit of a half moon, half shape there. Something there. Maybe his eyebrows turn up a little bit, right? And his mouth. Quivers just a little bit like now nah, let's 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 just give this a straight up frown. It's like that upside down thing, right? So there's sadness. See a lot of it a lot of the what you're looking at is it in the eyebrows and the mouth, sure, and the well, the eyes obviously, the nose doesn't do much, but you can scrunch, scrunch it up to make it uh, like if he's smiling really big, and he realizes the aliens aren't actually killing people; they're just playing with them for a little bit before they before they leave. I see it; <laughs> it adds a weird kind of kind of a thing when you have the eyes like that and the eyebrows. So we'll get rid of those. This can go back to just being Captain Generic guy. Okay. So, I mean, sure, it takes practice, but it's not... I feel like this is like Wooly. You remember that Wooly Wooly uh, toy back in the day? It had, like, magnetic shavings, and you just kind of, like, move that stuff around and... <laughs> Antoine Dennison, that's an alien probe smile. Mm, I don't know, man. I, I hear those those probes get get kind of intense. Every orifice, every orifice. If you've seen the X Files, then then you know. So I mean, that that's one thing that I noticed. Like I like I said in the intro uh, about the art. Sometimes is you got. You got a situation where, like, monsters are attacking, and everybody's stone-faced. There is nothing going on in the, the face to indicate that they're scared, that they're excited, that they're angry, um, that they're, like, resolute. So, you know, it's. I think that's important from an artist aspect or standpoint to get across what those characters are thinking when, uh, when they're fighting said zombies or aliens or terrorists or, you know, demons or 
whatever. Um, it's not like the image comics days where you could, you know, just do this. Right, get because he's he's flexing so hard. And then have the entire dialogue where you know what they're going to do for revenge. Just we're gonna go and we're gonna kill them all and we're gonna save everybody. Right. Um so emotion's important and I I sometimes it's it's one of those things you don't wanna just go out and say, hey, maybe watch your acting, because then of course you could start a flame war online and who the heck's got that kind of kind of time? <laughs> um, but then again, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I uh, I'm a cartoonist, right? I'm not exactly what you call your traditional comic book artist. Um, so my rules are a little bit differently than than say somebody like um, oh I don't know Ethan's got a pretty. Ethan Van Skyver's got a pretty uh, realistic style. Mm. Aaron Lepresti. I'd, I'd say his his loon, leans a little bit more towards cartoony. Uh, so does Graham's. Andy's got a pretty... Andy Smith's got a pretty realistic... I mean, aside from the muscles and stuff like that, hyper... He's got a pretty realistic style. Um, but they're all very good at acting. They all, they all, They're all very good at, for the most part, letting you know what the character's feeling in the scene. And that's something that newer people could, could really focus on as far as when they're learning. We'll just draw. And that's another, another thing. Um, Carl Stefan, Stefan Chubb, that guy, he's really good at expression. Of course, he's also very much a cartoony type person. Um, but I, I like I like looking at his stuff every once in a while to uh, kind of figure out what I'm doing with my stuff. I'm not even 100% sure what I'm doing today, to be honest. But um, yeah, just going to have a little short episode here. Talk very quickly about this. And... Then I will get done and I will start on some more uh, sketch cards. Because I've got a lot to do uh, for Charlie's London. I've got 60 done out of the, the whatever she's got up there. And got that to do. This is like the grandpa from Curly, Courage the Cowardly Dog. But and this is like, what, what would you call it? This a habit stream. It's not a hangout stream. I'm trying to put something out there, but I uh, didn't want to cancel it. Get something different on there. Run on the page layer. So we'll just do this. Modern problems call for modern solutions. Yeah. I think at 30 minutes we'll probably cap this off. And I'll just sit and draw for a little bit. Kind of low energy today, you know what I mean? It's kind of a... It's kind of a lower... Uh, not a whole lot going on. Day off. Exhausted. It's one of those things where you don't really want to draw. You don't want to do anything. But uh, you feel guilty for not. So... We draw. We draw for fun. In this case. If 
you guys ever do the uh, the flower sack challenge? Or over here, that where um, where you take a ooh, okay. All right, we'll do this before I go. Flower sack shack challenge, where you've got a flower sack pencil here. And you got to put some character into it, right? So, like, maybe he's sad. Right? He's just walking. He's just sad. Or maybe he's uh, he's jumping for joy. One of those other things you can do to warm up or uh he's you can twist him a little bit so you can put the twists in there and have him oh looks terrible running <laughs> I do that every day instead of oh, well. yeah that's me right there giving some speed lines I've been watching pretty closely uh, like the uh, some of these campaigns like Alterna they're really close to getting there they're uh, just a few days left, and they're really close to getting their goal, which is great because I ordered a Tiny Tim replica, Tiny Tim replica, and I wants my Tim. I wants that by my desk because it's it's hilarious. It's a heck of a character Pete Pete created from an inanimate object. <laughs> Not letting like a flower sack. You can just dance. There you go. Teamwork makes the dreams twerk. Isn't that what the kids are saying these days? <laughs> See, so put a twist in there. Just looking around. So you can kind of like divide that in half. See where he's coming from. Dr. Croy, you didn't miss much today. Hello. Uh, just talking about cartooning expressions. And I was just playing around with this flower sack. Because it's a low energy day. And I didn't have a topic for today. Didn't have much to talk about. Didn't even know if there's going to be a chat in here to talk, which is okay, because um, because it's okay. So I just figured I'd do a little drawing. Say hi to you guys if you showed up. Keep the habit of of uh, streaming because you know how it is. You give yourself a week off and you think maybe two weeks off, and then you take a month off and then you come back and you just don't know how to do anything. Bumbling around like uh, like I had when I when I first started and sometimes Wooly and I, when we did our shows and stuff like that, which I'm sure he'll be back, uh, we'd take two, three weeks off because of life and busyness and things like that and come back and it would be like, Whoa, well, this is all different. This is, this is new, even though, Hey, we'd been doing it for like two years, <laughs> but Hey, after this, I got, yeah, I got, to, maybe I'll do another alternative sketch card or a watercolor card. I got some chaplain stuff to do. Um, always tinkering, always messing around. That's that's what you do. Draw even when you don't feel like it. 
100% right. Those days off can lead to a complete stop. You don't have the motivation for it. But luckily, I've got plenty of little things I can do, both in physical and in digital. Um, been taking these, retaking these like different drawing lessons for different styles. And that's taken up a lot of time. Dr. Crow says, I do the same stuff with magic. If it's a routine or a trick I haven't done in a while, I have to relearn it, right? Yeah. It takes a long time to commit something to memory. Um, who should we draw? One second here. Let me let me just... We'll close out the show with some sort of a... Some sort of a drawing. Uh... We do an alternate character since they've only got four days left and just under five hundred dollars. All right, let's draw. Let's draw T-Bird. What do you say to that? Sounds good. Mysterio? I don't know. Try an independent guy. Let's try T-Bird. See what we can do with him. Hmm. Got a square job, but I'm gonna round it off, kind of give it like a Pixar sort of deal. Yeah. Hmm. It's always weird when you look at looking at somebody else's style circle it equals Mysterio. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, he's one of the easiest Spider-Man villains to draw a portrait of. Let's see here. Let's increase this. Give him some thicker eyebrows here. There we go. I cheated. I cheated. So I was one of those things when I uh, when I first started doing this stuff. I I kind of figured, you know, let's see, Doctor Chris says I'm going to be submitting a ten page comic to Alternative. For it came out on a Wednesday, just to see if I can have to find an artist soon. Yeah, I've been working on a small thing for that too. I I threw something out because it just wasn't right. See, the trick is with Alterna, Pete's got a very specific kind of uh, thing that he likes, right, for his stuff. And it's a fine line between something that they have done before and something that just isn't quite in line with the uh, with the company, right? Hello, Muscovite experiments. Hello, welcome. Um, so that that's the same thing that. Um, as far as is, is a pitch for a book. Cause I thought, you know, like if, if I ever do a comic, I'd probably go ahead and pitch to Alterna because they seem pretty well in line with what I, I do anyways. Right. Um, but the trick is, yeah, it's got to stay on brand. Absolutely. Dr. Crow. The trick is with, with Alterna is, you know, when you have, we share sensibilities with the company or, you know, like a lot of the creators. Trouble is they're already doing some of the, the type of books that you would do anyways, right? So if I were to say like, oh man, I got a, I got a, uh, a high fantasy kind of story and it might not be the same as Blood Realm, right? I got this great, like world building thingamajigger, like in set in fantasy and stuff like that. Now, that would be a harder sell because um, he's already got Blood Realm, right? And he wouldn't want to, you know, really need two books like that at his um, at his place when he could have, you know, like something different. So the difference, or the the difficulty is is coming up with something that um, you know that they don't have. 
so that I can actually not only, you know, stand out a little bit, but help them out with a new, with a new unique book. It'll happen one day, I'm sure. But right now I've, I've got some Charlie stuff I'm, I'm busy with and just life and whatnot. But yeah, I would, I would like to at least try getting something in. It came out on Wednesday, not only to just see how my stuff looks in newsprint, but it's an, it's an interesting challenge to be able to get something in there, you know? Ah. I don't really like that look on this. Whoops. But once again, we got a uh, teardropper that and then just draw right over it. There we go. I accidentally drew on the uh, the back page, background page. How about that? Soften those up, or harden those up, rather. Hmm. What color is his skin, anyways? Let's see. Try multiply. See what this what this does. That'll work. Makes it a little darker, doesn't it? Oh, well, we'll run with it. Gonna need a Mr. Crypt replacement. Yeah, I'm really sad to see that book go. Got to hang out with all the Alterna guy. I got to hang out with the Alterna guy. I spent a couple hours chatting with them. Great. Oh, man, I'm jealous. That's cool. I, uh talked to quite a few of them just kind of in the chat and stuff like that and all of them I well, no I take that back I met them all once even behind an avatar on, on one of Pete's shows great great group of people I like them well that's not fat enough Yeah, about 33 minutes in. I think that's probably a good time to just call it a day on this. Oh, wow. Call it a day on this lazy, lazy, quiet day off of mine. Got to come in, say hello to all of you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for having a chat with me. Um, next time, <laughs> if I pull a king of comedy and hold Alterna hostage, then my book will be printed. Oh, boy, don't do that. Just keep on trying. I'm sure you'll find something, Pete it will uh, take a liking to. But the nice thing about uh, it came out on Wednesday, as he said, he's, he gives a little more allowance for, you know, certain styles and things like that because, you know, it's not a, it's not an ongoing. It, it can be more stylistic. It's just got to be some quality to it. You know what I mean? And that's, that's where I'm kind of struggling. I want to have something, you know, very quality to send to Alterna because if it's going to be printed in the book, you know, I, I want it to be you know, not real, a fast, quick sketch kind of thing. I want it to be honest to goodness uh, quality for not just Pete, not for my, just myself, but for the people buying the comic. You know, they're, they're even if it's two bucks, they're plunking down two dollars that they earned. They should have, you know, the best entertainment they can get for that. That's just, that's just my feelings on the subject. Anyways, I want you all to have a great day. Uh, thank you very much. Get rid of that ticker. I'm going to get rid of this music, close down the shop, have a absolute wonderful day. And this has been 